Hi there. Today I want to tell you a little bit about a case that you might have already heard about. It's the disciplinary action that's being taken against Dr. Jordan Peterson by the College of Psychologists of Ontario and his challenge to their disciplinary action. I really want to hear your opinion about this case and I want to hear specifically what you think we at the Canadian Constitution Foundation should do next. Should we apply to intervene in Dr. Peterson's case? I can't wait to tell you all about it. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Christine and I'm the litigation director with the Canadian Constitution Foundation, a legal charity that fights for fundamental freedoms in Canada. I upload regular videos about our ongoing cases and about other interesting developments in constitutional law in Canada. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, please hit like and subscribe below. It really helps my videos out a lot. Also, please remember that nothing in my videos is legal advice. If you have your own legal question or problem, please consult your own lawyer. So this case involves Dr. Jordan Peterson, who probably needs no introduction. He is a best-selling author and professor at the University of Toronto in psychology. He spent a lot of his career as a clinical psychologist treating patients, but he no longer treats patients. He now has a career focused in giving commentary on social and political issues. Now, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with who he is, and since he is a polarizing individual, I'm sure a lot of you have your own opinion about Dr. Peterson. Now, I've actually met Dr. Peterson a couple of times, and I've also interviewed him. I overall like him. I've read two of his books, 12 Rules for Life and Beyond Order, and I agree with you know some of what he says, for example, I make my bed every day, uh, but other things he says I don't agree with, and sometimes I don't like the things he says, but it's his right to make those statements, whatever my opinion or whatever anyone else's opinion. Now, Dr. Peterson has been a member of the College of Psychologists of Ontario since 1999, and that is the professional regulatory body for psychologists, and it is established and empowered by statute. Now, while Dr. Peterson no longer treats patients, he has maintained membership in the college. Some complaints were made to the College Inquiries, Complaints and Reports Committee by members of the public about statements that had been made by Dr. Peterson. Those statements re related to his opinion regarding things like politics, public figures, the Freedom Convoy, climate change, and the comments did not relate to the practice of psychology. They were made on social media, Twitter in particular, and on podcasts, including on Dr. Peterson's own YouTube channel and on the Joe Rogan podcast. The most controversial of the statements that he made was a description of a Sports Illustrated swimsuit model as, to quote him, not beautiful. The use of transgender actor Elliot, who was formerly Ellen Page's name at birth, and the pronouns of Elliot Page at birth, which were female. Another complaint was about Dr. Peterson's response to someone on Twitter who had been advocating for population and con control. And his response was, you are free to leave at any time, to quote. And another complaint was calling Jerry Butts, Trudeau's former chief of staff, to quote Peterson corrupt. Now, while provocative, these statements do not relate to the practice of psychology. In fact, some of them are clearly not even serious comments. I don't think that anyone could in good faith seriously interpret the comment, you're free to leave at any time as anything more than a joke. But nevertheless, the college conducted an investigation and found that Dr. Peterson's statements violated the code of ethics for psychologists and therefore also the standards of professional conduct. The college ordered Dr. Peterson to complete an education program to address what they called issues regarding professionalism in public statements. Dr. Peterson has said he will not do what he has described as mandatory re-education. Uh, I don't really disagree with that description. I think that's accurate. So he brought an application for judicial review at the Ontario Divisional Court challenging the constitutional validity of the code of ethics and the standard of professional conduct. Now, I've seen some people comment that Dr. Peterson cannot bring a constitutional challenge to the code and standards because the College of Psychologists is not government. 
Uh, that is not correct. That is wrong. Dr. Peterson can, of course, bring this challenge because the college is empowered by legislation. So the code and standards created by the college need to comply with our constitution. There was actually a journalist, I think she might have been from CBC, who tweeted about this saying Dr. Peterson couldn't challenge the validity of those standards because they're not created by government. She subsequently had to delete that tweet after a number of lawyers pointed out that she was wrong and that the charter does apply in this case. So how does Dr. Peterson say that the standards infringe on the charter? Well, he argues that there are specific parts of the standards that infringe on college members' Section 2B charter right, the right to freedom of expression, particularly with regard to the application of the code and the standards to speech falling outside of this, this practice of psychology. He brought a judicial review seeking to have those particular provisions struck out or struck down or alternatively read so narrowly as to not apply to college member speech or other activities that are beyond the scope of the practice of psychology. So let's go through some of those, some of those sections. Sections 6.6a through b of the standards say members who provide information, advice, or comment to the public via any medium must take precautions that to ensure that a the statements are accurate and supportable based on current professional literature or research and b the statements are consistent with the professional standards policies and ethics currently adopted by the college sections 2.1 and 6.6 a through b of the standards as interpreted uh, applied and enforced by the college are now operating to unjustifiably limit the free expression of college members, which is in contravention of their charter guaranteed right to freedom of expression. Now let's also look at the Code of Ethics for Psychologists. The preamble to the Code of Ethics says, personal behavior becomes a concern of the discipline, the discipline of psychology, only if it is such of such a nature that it undermines public trust in the discipline of psychology as a whole, or if it raises questions about the psychologist's ability to carry out appropriately his or her responsibilities as a psychologist. But no part of the code of ethics sets out how public trust can be undermined as a whole. The effect though of the college's interpretation, application, and enforcement of this provision in the code preamble, in the case of Dr. Peterson, is that it infringes on his and on other college members section 2B charter right to freedom of expression. The code also includes a definition of quote, moral rights that is exceptionally broad and vague with the result that the requirement to adhere to moral rights is overwhelming in scope and has the effect of infringing on the freedom of expression rights of members like Dr. Peterson. Other ethical principles included in the code include the requirement that psychologists, quote, demonstrate appropriate respect for the cultural perspectives and values of others. The scope of these terms, cultural perspectives and values, is not defined in the code, nor is the standard for appropriate respect. The code also requires psychologists to never make, quote, degrading comments or demeaning jokes in the public sphere. The code requires psychologists to use, quote, language that conveys respect for the dignity of persons and people at all times and in for all forms of communication without any clear or definable standard. The code requires that a psychologist avoid or refuse to participate in, quote, practices disrespectful to the moral rights of persons, which again is an overbroad and unclear standard in and of itself. And also because the code definition of, to quote, moral rights is impossibly broad and vague. The definition of unjust discrimination fails to identify what constitutes these, quote, activities and the inclusion of to quote, any other preference or personal characteristic, condition or status renders that provision also impossibly broad and vague. The effect of all of the college's interpretations of these provisions and their application and enforcement of the code is to infringe on the right to freedom of expression guaranteed by the charter, particularly with regard to it applying to speech that falls outside the scope of the practice of psychology. To me, this is a classic freedom of expression case. There appears to be a growing interest in self-governing professional regulators sanctioning their members for what 
people call heterodox speech or speech that's outside the norm of mainstream culture. And this particular case is in line with our work in another case, an appeal uh, called Strom and the Saskatchewan Registered Nurses Association. That case uh, was a case where a nurse had been disciplined for Facebook posts she had made criticizing the care that her, uh, her ailing grandfather had received in a nursing home. In this case, in Dr. Pearson's case, if the court sides with the college, it would suggest that individuals who have to spend years training can be kicked out of their profession for having the wrong views. In this case, Dr. Peterson is a very well-known public figure who is commenting on Twitter and on podcasts about public issues and public figures. And he was engaging with members of the public in response to issues of public policy. He was sanctioned by the College of Psychologists for these public comments he made about issues totally unrelated to the practice of psychology. He doesn't treat patients and the investigation was triggered by complaints, not by patients, but by members of the public who took offense to his statements and are now seeking to harm him through the regulatory proceedings. Dr. Peterson himself has said in this case, the process is the punishment. Now I admit that Dr. Peterson is a controversial figure with his detractors and supporters. While many people take offense to his comments, many others support them. I'd be interested to hear what you think. Leave your thoughts below in the comment section. But remember, the point that I wanna emphasize isn't actually whether we agree or disagree with what Dr. Peterson says. It's about whether his comments can be sanctioned by a professional regulator when they realistically have nothing to do with the practice of psychology and the complaints were brought by members of the public who basically just don't like Dr. Peterson and have a personal grudge against him. So my last question for you then is what do you think we at the Canadian Constitution Foundation should do? We often apply for something called intervener status. That's where we apply to the court to make arguments not in support of one outcome or another, but to assist the court in understanding the broader principles at play. In this case, the principle of freedom of expression. The purpose of an intervention in this case would not be to take a position on Dr. Peterson's comments, but rather about the fact that Dr. Peterson is free to make them without fear of punishment by the government through a professional regulator. So should we do it? Leave a comment below and let me know what you think. If you wanna find out what we ultimately decide to do, subscribe to this channel by hitting the little blue button below and I will definitely provide an update when I have some more to say. I also have some updates coming about our federal court challenge to the Trudeau government's use of the Emergencies Act and an update about the status of our appeal to in our challenge to the British Columbia government's vaccine passport program that failed to provide workable exemptions for people with disabilities. You can stay up to date about those cases by subscribing to our email freedom updates at the ccf.ca slash freedom update. Okay, that's all for this update. Thanks for watching and let's keep fighting for freedom in Canada.